Strength is the product of struggle. You must do what others don't to achieve what others won't. Don't count the days. Make the days count. Do today what others won't and achieve tomorrow what others can't. Rockstars, this is episode 22 of Stuck on Sawdust. Yippee-ki-yay, mother... Rockstars, welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, I'm Daniel with Bearded Viking Woodworks. I've made it my mission to search online and search throughout the local markets to find the most inspiring, the coolest, and the most customizable woodworking projects I can find and bring them back and demonstrate how I would build them and why you should try building them. Whether you're a master craftsman or a beginner, us woodworkers tend to struggle to find inspiration sometimes, and when you get stuck, it is hard to get out of that funk. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> well, I made this series called Stuck on Sawdust to help us woodworkers out. So, this is episode 22, and we're going to jump right in with another badass key holder slash shelf for the entryway of your home. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Uh, Daniel, that's pretty similar to the video you just put out. Well, yes and no. This one is by the same creator. However, it's got a little bit of a difference to it. And I think it's significant enough of a difference to bring it and share it with you and show you how I would get this thing built with my own little spin on it. Oh, shit. Hey! Sorry. This one will be a little bit quicker to build than the last. So I might have room for a surprise bonus project in this video, so stand by. But for now, meet me at the table saw. So this is the one I made the other day and posted a video of. And it's got a similar look to the one I'm about to build, but it's a little bit different. I was really pleased with how this one turned out. So I have no doubts that this next one is going to be just as cool. So. Let's put this away and let's get busy. So I dug out some Peruvian walnut and it's basically like normal walnut, but it's a little bit more grainy. And I've got this leftover piece of birch from that table build I did. So we're going to implement these two woods for this project. My birch is three and a half inches wide. And it's plenty long, so 17 and 3 quarters, so we'll be cutting that down. But I'm going to leave my walnut as long as possible. So I'm going to get this all shaped up to 10 inches by 3 and a half inches. So let's go ahead and get this piece cut, and we'll move over to the miter box. Alright, so right now we have 10 and 1 8. So I just want to square up the very edges of this piece to make sure they're nice and square. So let's head over to the miter saw. So I'm just gonna square up these two ends. My overall length for the walnut now is at 10 inches and our width is at three and a half inches. The thickness of this piece is an inch and three quarters. Our birch is three and a half inches wide and this is three quarters of an inch thick. So before we do anything else, I need to figure out a good spot to cut out our notch for our piece to sit in. Okay, so they've got theirs done two different ways. They got this way here and then they got this way. So I'm kind of in a kerfuffle. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with this one. I like the overhang. So, I want it to look symmetrical. Let's see where two and a half inches puts us. So we'll go two and a half, and we'll make our birch the same as our walnut at 10 inches. It'll stop right here. I think I'm liking that. I just hope two and a half is enough. So two and a half will bring us right here. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go three and a half inches to begin with and stop my notch right there because I can always come back and take more out if I feel it necessary. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get our piece marked out. So what we'll do is we'll take our birch at three quarters, but we'll add one eighth to it because I want a one eighth shadow gap up from my walnut and in from my walnut here. And that will all make sense here in just a second. And then we will take our marking gauge and set it to our three and a half inch mark. And we'll mark right here on the top and right here on the side, just down to our other line here. That is what will come out of this piece. And then we'll darken up every line so we make sure we don't accidentally take out the wrong area. So I happen to have a dado stack set. You can do this with a single blade. It's just gonna take you a lot longer. And I recommend if you don't have a dado stack and can't afford one, I highly recommend just getting a flat toothed blade for your table saw. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can get one for a good price. I highly recommend getting a dado stack if you can afford it. They have all sorts of sizes. Just make sure your arbor bolt on your table saw is long enough to carry that dado stack safely. You wanna be able to keep a washer on it as well as your nut. So read up some information on the table saw that you have to see if it's possible to put a dado stack on your saw. And always be sure to unplug your saw when assembling a blade. All right, so we've got our dado stack height set to about 3 8 of an inch. And we'll start by taking out that mud. All right, so let me explain why I took out half of the stock back from here to here. So taking out this much at one time can be very, very dangerous. So I wanted to get the bulk of it out back here before I started removing all of it at once, just so there's not as much to be removed right here where I have to keep my pressure down. Then that allows me to hold it steady while I take the remaining little bit out of the notch. Let me show you. And as long as you take this cut nice and slow, you should have no problem. The reason I kept this piece like this was so I had a little bit that I could rely on so it wouldn't want to tilt like that because that can get really, really finicky and dangerous. So now all I have to rely on is cutting out a sixteenth of a piece, which is nothing. So I'll just hold it down tight as I can here. Take the cut nice and slow and you should be good to go. I have waited so long to pull out one of my favorite hand tools in the shop to show it off. Big chisel. I have big chisel. Your chisel, little chisel. <laughs> it's really not a chisel. It's a uh, slick. Let's just clean up some of these dado marks. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself with this. You just have to worry about chopping off a finger. <laughs> this thing is huge. All right, that's much better. All right, so now that we've got our base all cleaned up and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and get one side of our birch. Birch, please. <laughs> Square, and then we'll cut it down to the size we need. And I'm gonna do that right here at the table saw. 
So after much deliberation, I decided I'm going to pull over eight and a quarter and that will be the size of our birch. And I think that will be the best look. Yes, yeah, so we're going with that. I like that look. All right, so I went ahead and cut a couple of eighth inch spacers. I'm gonna set these right here. And I'm really digging how that looks. So we're gonna use some quarter inch dowels to attach this piece to this piece. And I'm gonna do two here and two here. So we'll do four dowels all together. So I'm just gonna mark out my top. That way I don't get turned around. So I've got six and a half inches to my end right here from my birch. So we'll go in an inch and a half from our side here and then an inch and a half here. So from our sides, we'll come in about one inch. So I'll just take my marking wheel and mark one inch. And now we'll just make a little mark with our marking knife right at our inch and a half marks. And that way we get an accurate hole marked out. All right, and we'll take our hole punch. Just punch these holes. All right, so we got our holes ready and marked. Now let's head on over to our drill press. All right, so we're going to be using a quarter inch dowel. So I've got a quarter inch bit inside my drill press. And I've got my blue tape set right where I want my bit to stop. So we're going to be going in about 5 sixteenths of an inch deep. And there we have our holes. So I went ahead off camera and cut four dowels at seven eighths of an inch long. Let's give them a nice tap. And we're gonna transfer these the same way we did for our last key ring holder. And we'll just take our Sharpie, give it a nice heavy covering right on top of the dowels. All right, once you get that done, I put a backer right here to keep my back flush. And I got my spacer in there to keep me at my eighth inch. So we'll just set it right on top. Just give it a nice press. And give it a little wiggle. And there you have where your holes go. So let's head back to the drill press and get our base drilled out. And we want to go the same depth so we keep our tape right where it's at. We laid everything out right it should just slip right in oh my gosh that was so smooth <laughs> that worked out really damn good i've decided i'm going to paint the complete bottom of this piece of birch black but i need to tape my edges where i do not want paint Now I just need to add a couple of pieces to the tops of my dowel because I don't want to paint where I'm going to be gluing the dowel. <laughs> Damn geese. Alright, we'll set this aside and let it get dry. And we will just add a dab of glue. All right. Okay, y'all, so now that the glue is all dried up, we're gonna install these two pieces of copper right on the face of our piece here. And we're gonna do them right in front of where we installed our dowels. So we just need to cut out a dado to carry our pieces of copper. So we'll take our speed square and we'll line up our copper right over the area we installed our dowels. Once you're in the right spot, go ahead and remove your copper. And just make a mark with your marking knife. And then set your copper back on that line you just scribed. And then scribe the other side. 
and we'll do the same thing on this side where these dowels are installed. Now I'm just going to take my pencil and darken my marking knife lines up. And this is where our dados will be cut out for our copper. Now I'm going to transfer the marks right here at the top so I can line these marks up with my blade. And we'll take our piece of copper, put it next to our blade, and we want to be about a sixteenth shy of the top of the copper. And we'll take our piece, line up that knife mark with our blade, and make these cuts. And there we have our copper inlay. And I think I might leave this piece long like that. I kind of like that look. And we can always come back and cut it off later. But for now, we're gonna leave those off and we're gonna go ahead and get some rare earth magnets installed on the bottom here to hold our keys. All right, so now we're gonna take our piece and just lay out for our magnets. And I've received a couple legitimate, honest comments about asking me if magnets were safe to be around cell phones or key fobs. Well, to answer that question, the rare earth magnets that I'm gonna be installing, yes, absolutely. In fact, rare earth magnets are in your modern phone, in your speaker, and your wireless charging for your phone is magnetized. So yeah, you're totally safe. It would take an extremely strong magnet and then it would be a rare occasion that it messes with your key fob or your cell phone. So you're safe. So I'm gonna set three magnets along our bottom here and I'll go in at two inches from the side on either side and then I'll split these two marks right in half and that's where my three magnets will go. I'm gonna move them out toward the front of the piece just a little bit. So we'll take our marking wheel. I'm gonna come about one inch in from the edge. And you don't have to have a marking wheel to do this. You can do this with a tape measure and a pencil, but I like my marking wheel, so we're gonna use this. And then I'll take my marking knife and just make sure we're at two inches here. And then just make a little knife mark right there on that marking wheel line. And then pull two inches in from this side. But you can place your magnets wherever you please. So we'll go ahead and get these three holes drilled out for our magnets and I'll meet you at the drill press. So I've got some epoxy. And it's just Gorilla Glue epoxy, two-part epoxy. And I've got them just below the surface, about a sixteenth on each one, so I can sand this down without affecting the magnets. So, all right, we've got our magnets installed. Let's go ahead and sand this baby down and put some finish on it. All right, so y'all ready to watch this thing come to life? Me too. I think that copper is going to set this off as soon as it's installed. Well, Rockstars, I couldn't settle on the copper. I wasn't sure if it looked right or not. And whenever I get indecisive, I just go ahead and try and switch it up. And I installed these pieces of black metal and I think this looks 10 times better. Let me know what your thoughts are on the black or should I have kept it copper. Between the two of these, I kind of like this one a little better, but I'm starting to get attached to this one too. So we'll have to see how they do on Etsy. I've got two people with this in their cart already. 
and it's been two and a half, maybe three days since I posted it. So I have a feeling this will be selling here over the weekend. So I'm happy about that. As far as this one, I'm probably going to post this one at $65. As far as material goes, I mean, you're looking at about maybe eight to $10 worth of material if you use pine. I got some Peruvian walnut and some birch and the metallic sticks are pretty cheap. The magnets are fairly priced. And I'm leaving links to all this stuff in the description so you can pick it up along with my supplier for all of my hardwoods. So to sum up the material cost for the finish, the magnets, the metal, the copper, the wood, and the mounting hardware, you're looking at anywhere between $10 to $25 to build this guy, depending on how big you want it in your dimension. As far as shipping goes, you have to keep in mind magnets are considered hazardous when it comes to shipping so you'll have to pay a little bit extra for some hazardous packaging material but no big deal so i'll put shipping at about 12 to 15 bucks and that's putting the address in across the other side of the nation so not too bad and always keep in mind any online store will charge you a publishing fee and a sales fee so keep that in mind. So I know y'all want to know how to mount this. Well, I would recommend using this hardware. And that's what I'm going to wind up doing. I've already got my holes drilled out for it. And I'm going to finish doing all that off camera. But definitely recommend using this type of hardware. This is about the best way to hang it for the structural purposes. But as far as these magnetic key holders go, they're modern, they're sleek, they're good looking, and they're going to sell and make me a big ass profit so don't hesitate to get yours built and make yourself a big ass profit before we go i want to share one of my members projects real quick about a month before christmas i posted a video on how to build a rustic tree and he took that video and ran with it and made this badass christmas tree and i just wanted to put it in the video because i really respect people who put in work and enjoy the craft and you can follow him at Seaworm on YouTube. Kevin, good job, brother. And I appreciate your membership. I'll be doing a collaboration with Rick's Two Cents. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I believe it's this Friday. I'll have to double check. But I will definitely keep y'all posted. This is Bearded Viking Woodworks. And I have been Daniel. Until next time, get in your shop and make some sawdust. Thanks, guys.